Hello and welcome back to another episode of this week's watches and if I'm not mistaken this is episode 49 so all being well next week will be episode 50 and that'll be the final drop of the year which is kind of cool to end on episode 50. So it's been amazing to see this grow, um, you know, how we've gone from drop to drop and the consistency has been there. Um, it's been absolutely incredible and that's thanks to you guys and girls, so I really, really do appreciate that. And as always, if you have a watch you want to sell, get in contact now because Tuesday, maybe Wednesday morning, super early, is the final day that we're going to be taking in watches for this year. Um, the reason being, I'm actually going to have a break this Christmas, the first break I've had in a long time, actually ever since working. So I'm actually not going to be in the office from the 24th of December till I think the 4th of January, maybe the 3rd of January, can't remember. But that entire time, I'm not going to be in the office, we're not going to be shipping out watches, we're not going to be likely getting new watches, and if we are, it will be obviously for the new year. Um, so therefore you want to be quick, get them in now, message me, email me, call me, whatever you need to do, but stick to one of them, please. Those of you who message me on Instagram, send me an email, send me a WhatsApp and call me. Please don't do that. I don't, I don't need four means of co communication. But anyway, we have, as always, a varied drop for you guys and girls. Uh, again, some really, really affordable pieces in there. As you can see, we've got three swatches on the table. Um, just some fun bits that I think are great for Christmas. And also probably on Monday, there will be a top 10 watches under a thousand pounds for Christmas, brackets that we have in stock. Uh, so it's very clear that we're talking about what we have in stock as opposed to all of the options out there. And we'll see how that goes. If you guys and girls like that kind of stuff, we'll bring it back because three or four years ago, I used to do those kind of videos like top 10 blue watches under 500 pounds. I don't know if you get what I mean. So we'll see what you guys and girls think of it. And maybe it becomes a series that we continue doing. Before we dive into the watches on the table, I always forget to say this, but in the description, there is a timestamp for each watch we're showing. So you can skip all my rambling and go straight to the watch you want to see. If you're here just to look at the Panerai, you can skip straight to that. The Amiga, same, you get the point. There's also a link to the website so you can see all the details because we don't talk prices in these videos because this stays on the internet forever. And in six months, a lot of these prices will be different. That's the, the nature of this beast we're in. Um, so for that reason, we don't talk prices, but you can see the prices obviously on the website you can purchase. And on that point, in terms of the means of purchase, we've been asked this quite a few times recently. We take pretty much everything, um, apart from like Bitcoin and all that kind of stuff. Um, we've looked into it, maybe one day, but not right now. So your normal debit, credit, MasterCards, PayPal, all those normal things, your yeah, Apple Pay, you can do all that via the website. We also take bank transfer and obviously cash as well. Ideally, we'd prefer a bank transfer rather than cash, but again, these options are there. We also obviously have the showroom. Now, as you guys and girls would have seen, the government here in the UK has added some more restrictions. It doesn't really change things here because we're not a massive venue, so it's not. It, it makes zero difference to us. We uh, test, we mask, we you know have hand sanitizer available. Um, you know we can do everything we need to do and have continued to do since day one. So don't worry there. If you want to come to the office and see some of these watches, you more you're more than welcome. It is appointment only. Please keep that in mind. Please send me an email or a WhatsApp um, before just saying, oh, by the way, I'm in the area today um, because it just doesn't work like that. And let's take a look at what's on wrist. I'm wearing my Fierce Brunswick Brown. I've actually been wearing this sort of the past three or four days. Um, we announced that we are selling the Strap Tailors uh, premium suede straps on the website. So they're now available to purchase there. Perfect little Christmas gifts as well. So go check those out. Um, and part of the reason I'm wearing this is because I've been wearing it on a Strap Tailor strap for probably... I don't know, like two weeks after I got the watch because I just love the strap pairing. Uh, and this is one of the straps we have on the website. So you can actually go see it. And if you want to see how this is aged with quite a lot of wear, send me a message. I can show in some photos for you so you can see how the suede will develop over time. Um, but that is enough rambling. I think that was a lot of rambling for this video. Let's get on to what you're here to see, and that is the watches. We're going to start with the beefy panel. So we are starting with this certainly not a small watch <laughs> this is the panerai luminor marina on a bracelet which you don't see very often now the distinctive characteristic uh, characteristics of the luminor is this beefy crown guard something that panerai or rolex really helped invent all those years ago panerai is an interesting brand we did a post on it the other day on instagram and it's quite interesting to see everyone's opinions and thoughts now 
there is a lot out there in regards to their history, heritage, and a lot of scandals, um, which is always interesting to read. Um, but at the end of the day, in regards to their watches, they make they are fantastic, and there's definitely a few references I really like, and I think I will actually add to the personal collection. Um, but this is the PAM 299, as it's known, and it is from July 2012, comes with its full box and papers, and as you can see, we had it polished, and wow, does it look good. Hopefully this is all showing up nicely in the camera. Get that nicely in focus, there you go. Look at that. They've done a really good job and it looks pretty much brand new now. Um, so really great watch. Inside is the automatic uh, Panerai OP3 as it's known. No exhibition case back, closed case back on this one. But as we say, it comes on the bracelet, which is quite interesting really. It makes the watch definitely wear a lot bigger because it is a 44 mil watch. So if you're wanting the Panerai look, but maybe a bit more wearable, the leather strap or rubber strap options would be best, but it's nice to have this option of the bracelet. Um, as I said, it is from July 2012. Um, it does come with everything, but let's show it on wrist and torque dimensions. And here we are on my six and a three quarter, nearly seven inch wrist, and you can see it is not a unforgiving watch in the way it wears. It's big and it's supposed to be big. I mean, that's what Panerai are known for. At the end of the day, if you're looking for a small watch, uh, Panerai isn't the brand you should be looking at at all anyway 44 mil by 53 mil look to look over that 50 mil i always talk about but because it is the cushion case it does help it wear a lot lot better than it would if it was a traditional round case 15 mil thick again no small watch it's definitely got that heft to it and 24 mil looks um so yeah that bracelet option is a nice touch but i would definitely recommend getting a strap or a rubber strap for it as well it would just help with wearability for those of us with a smaller wrist but again you don't see them on the bracelet often so this is a really great option for someone wanting that true beefy panerai look go check it out from the panerai to a watch i will always love and i still think is insane value especially when you look at the market and that is the speedmaster mark 40. So next up the amiga speedmaster triple calendar mk40 or mark 40 as it's often referred to now the mark 40 is no official name really given to these watches it is definitely a collector's name um, and as a lot of you know, Hadinki uh, did a re-edition of this watch, apparently a re-edition. It wasn't a triple day, it was nothing really like it. I'm not a huge fan of it, to be honest. Um, this is 10 million times better, but theirs has the Hadinki badge on it, so there you go. Um, and Ben Clymer loves it, so it must be great. Anyway, this is the reference 1750084, and we have had multiple of these in, and there is actually two different references. I can't really tell what the differences are, I've got to be honest with you. Uh, aesthetically, there is no difference, as far as I can see, and mechanically, there is also no difference. Inside is the automatic Amiga Caliber 1151, um, and that's the same in both of them. So, I don't really know. So, if any of you guys and girls can educate me out there, do let me know. Um, what I have read online is a lot of opinions, rather than actual facts. So. Whether it's true or not, I don't know, so I'm not going to actually really comment on it much. But either way, both great options, both similar sort of prices. Um, and this one is absolutely stunning, really great condition. It was serviced in 2019 by Amiga themselves, so it had all the works that you come to expect from Amiga. It does come with the paperwork for that service. It has an Amiga buckle, incorrect tong, um, but the correct buckle. And for those of you who are wondering, tong is that pot there. And also I say tong weird apparently, because I'm from the Midlands, so there you go. Um, but we paired it on this really nice suede strap, which just really suits the watch. And this watch is that perfect pop of colour and fun. Often people see this and they go, there's no way I'd like that. It's not something, for me, those colours and that, you know, it's just no, no, no. But then they try it on and their opinion changes straight away, including my own. I was also someone who didn't really like this watch when I first saw it in photos. But after having it in a few times, um, I gotta be honest, it's amazing. As I said, it does come with this service uh, papers, but it also comes with its original Amiga strap, which has seen better days, hence why we put it on a new strap. But this is the fitted ends strap um, that it was originally sold on. It came on a bracelet or the strap. So yeah, no box, no papers, unfortunately, um, but the price does reflect that, and this is an absolute bargain. But let's put it on wrist and talk dimensions. So here we go. Circa 1999 is what we've dated this watch to. Um, and yeah, 39 mil by 44.5 mil, 13.5 mil thick, and 18 mil lugs. Endless options, perfect dimensions. It just really works on the wrist. And I think this smaller case size with this slightly busier and more colorful dial, 
is perfect. I think it suits this much more than it would a 42, personally. Um, so go check it out on the website and pick yourself up a great deal right before Christmas. From there, we're actually getting into just under a thousand pound territory now, which is quite interesting. We're gonna have a look at a Rolex 1016 under a thousand pounds. It's totally not that, let's take a look. So, have you ever wanted a Rolex 1016 but don't have 15,000 pounds plus to buy one in pretty good condition? Otherwise you get a load of service pops, which, hey, if you like it, you like it. But if you don't have that kind of money, but you want something really cool, this is perfect. Homage watches, a subject everyone has an opinion about. Even your grandma, go ask her. I guarantee she has an opinion, and the goldfish. But anyway, everyone has an opinion. Everyone thinks they know what is right and wrong. You know what? Buy what you like. If you like the design of something, but don't either don't want to splash 15 grand or don't have 15 grand to splash, then don't, you know, there are options out there and this is one of them. This is the Incipio, as you can see, Rolex 1016 Homage. Interesting thing about this, it was part of a Japanese magazine brand and they made two to 300 of these, automatic and manually wound, um, in the 300, it's believed to be, in the 90s and they did a raffle prize sort of giveaway to try and get in to, to buy one basically so what we see today with certain brands doing the the raffle i think it's actually very prominent in trainers i have no idea about trainers but i see that's a raffle system the same sort of thing back in the 90s to get this watch which is quite crazy to think um and as i said they did automatic and manual this is the manually wound version with the eta 2801-2 um and the automatic version was also an eta but it appears to be that the automatic version is much more prominent online than the manual, for whatever reason. I don't know if there's less numbers, we don't really know those kind of details, unfortunately. What we do know is it looks awesome. Uh, it does come on a oyster style bracelet with the clamshell, which I think is quite funny, on the uh, clasp as well. Uh, all built very well, it definitely feels like a 1016 um, in the fact that it feels like a vintage watch. As I said, 1990s, you've got tritium on the dial, which is aged really nicely. Um, oh, and the dial of the automatic and manual are different as well. And I think this is the nicer, more simpler dial. Yeah, screw down crown, manually wound. What more to say? What more to say? Let's show it on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go. And this is where it gets very important. As a, as a true homage, it should be the same sort of sizes. And this is 36 mil by 44 mil look to look. Perfect. 13.5 mil thick, which is slightly thicker, I believe, and 20 mil lugs. So again, endless options, drilled lug holes, so you can swap it out, put it on a nice brown suede strap or something. I do like a brown suede, but this just looks really good, especially on the bracelet, it fits perfectly on my wrist. And yeah, I kept this one behind for quite a while because I'll be honest, I'm enjoying it and I still will enjoy it if you don't buy it. So it's up to you, buy it, don't buy it, I don't really care, I like it. So go check it out. Now onto a watch which I think is arguably one of the best value modern chronographs you can get. And I think they actually discontinued it. So now is the perfect time to pick one up at a massive discount compared to what retail was and that's this TSOC. So as I said, arguably one of the best value for money modern chronographs you can get or could get because as I said, they're discontinued. So some retailers I believe still have them uh, in stock but for the most part they're gone. And I wanna say retail is around 12 or 1300. Again, I could be wrong, but I believe it's around that. This is the Tissot Heritage 1948 chronograph. The almost perfect watch. And I'm gonna talk about why I think it's not quite perfect. I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, the reference is T6617233, and it comes in well under a thousand pounds for an automatic heritage inspired chronograph from a very good brand. I don't care what you say, Tiso make great watches for the price. And this is a perfect example of that. It's from March 2021, does come with its full box and papers. And behind this exhibition case back is the ETA 2894-2, which can be found in much more expensive watches. So you're not only getting a great design, a great automatic uh, chronograph, but one with an actually uh, a very good movement. It does come with its original strap, which is unworn with the deploying buckle. Um, I don't find it very comfortable personally. And we put it on this shell cordovan, which I think just makes it look so much more expensive than what it is. Um, we'll talk more about dimensions in a minute. I think dimensions are perfect. Little bit sure on the look to look would have been really nice, but again, that's just me being super picky. The one thing that I don't like about this watch is the fact they put a date there. Now, this is controversial. People love the date. I love a date. You know, I often find myself having to figure out what day it is and I don't have any watches with dates for the most part. But the placement of it, oh, come on, why, why do that? So many brands do this. Tissot, Hamilton, even Amiga, 
Um, even AP with their chronos. Like, what are you doing? No, come on. Don't put it there. Put it at like 6 o'clock or something. They're never going to listen to me. Anyway, this is almost perfect. If that wasn't there, this is a watch that would stay with me forever. And I mean it. Like, honestly, it is that good. The dial is so well finished. Applied indices and little appliques all around. Beautiful hands. Look at those twisted lugs. So reminiscent of the early days. And look at the finishing. Honestly, so, so good. So, so nice. And just a beautiful watch. Yeah, almost perfect. It's a shame. But for the price, honestly, you will have so much fun with this for a while. And I don't see how it can be worth less than what I'm selling it for, like in the future. Because a fully automatic chronograph like this is just, it's mad. Anyway, let's put it on wrist tall dimensions. And there we go. Look at that. That just works so beautifully on the wrist. 39.5mm uh, by 48.5mm. It really is great on the wrist. 12.5mm thick, which is super thin for an automatic chronograph. Um, especially when you look at some other brands with the same movement. It's like 3 millimeters thicker for no apparent reason. 20mm lugs. Uh, they are curved spring bars. So when you swap out the strap, always remember to put those curved spring bars in otherwise you're going to ruin whatever strap you're putting on because it will start scratching against the underside of the case so just be aware of that but a good looking watch and a hell of a bargain for an almost perfect watch ah, not quite but go check it out now on to my favorite watch on the table and i'm very excited about this and i can't wait to show you all of the little bits and bobs in the box this is the nevada um yeah let's take a closer look so this is where being a watch dealer really sucks because you get great watches like this in and you just can't keep them all. It is just, it's frustrating. But at the same time, I get the opportunity to actually experience and enjoy these watches. This is the Nevada Antarctic uh, Glacier Automatic. Look at that dial. That is ridiculous. Like, let's get that in focus. There we go. Applied indices, applied Nevada Shield there at 12 o'clock. And so simple, yet so beautiful. And you can see how the dial's patinaed over time. It's... I thought this finishing was actually just like intended to be like this at first, you know, with the whole Antarctic glacier, because it kind of looks like the snowy mountains or whatever, you know, where the snow's coming off and that bare rock beneath is starting to show itself. Um, that was very poetic of me. Wow, I've sold it to myself. How beautiful. But there you go. A really, really stunning example. Really nice case. It's definitely worn. There's a few marks here and there, but to be expected, this is stunning. Nevada crown there. Case back with a penguin makes it all the better. If it doesn't have the penguin, don't even bother. Put it in the bin, honestly. But this is still impaired on a grey suede strap. And it does come with a fair few things. So let's go through them. First thing, it comes with this period correct bracelet. You're either going to love it or you're going to hate it. I am so torn on what I think of it, but it is a patent pending. For some reason they wanted to patent it, I don't know. Um, but it looks really good. It does come with a spare link as well. And most importantly, Nevada... Antarctic box. Look, penguin, as I said. So don't throw this one away. Uh, let's just zoom out. There we go. Um, really, really cool. It does come with its outer sleeve as well, which is mad. And as we lift it up, look at that. And there's so much in here. There's the spare link I was talking about. And let's go through these things. So you have right here the original signed paperwork from September 1971, bought in Chingford at Station Road. Pretty cool, pretty cool. But that is all there. Then you have some service paperwork. So, there was a repair done at some point. Um, which one is it? There's a few things in here. Here we go. This one. So, this is the first repair that was done in 1978. And it was clearly some work. Uh, I don't know what was done on it. 8%. I guess that's what that was back then. Oh, God. How times were better back then. Uh, they spent £7 and 2 pence, which was increased by a pound for some reason. But, yeah, this was done in Clerkenwell Road, which is where we're based. This is 68, which is only down the road from us. Absolutely crazy. This place is no longer there. They went out of business. And I wonder if it's because... They put the wrong glass on. So in 1979, this watch had to go to a different watchmaker, Richard Miles, um, and the glass was incorrect that they did. So the glass that they put on is actually in this bag. Look at this. Let's get it out. There you go. And that is the glass that they put in, which is apparently the incorrect glass. Maybe it was the wrong dome height or something. I don't know. Um, but kind of crazy. They also put in a little receipt thing for timing, maybe? I don't know what this is. 
Um, but that's all in there. I mean, how crazy is this that it comes with all this extra bits? You know, there's a story here, a story that we'll never really know what the exact story was, but we can kind of piece it together. Um, a little booklet as well. Don't know, maybe the booking in receipt. Uh, and then there's a couple of other bits and bobs. These aren't, don't really have anything specific that connected to the watch, so I can't guarantee they are originally for this watch, but it all came together, so I mean, we can sort of guess that it did. But how crazy is that? All of this history, all packaged in to this one little box. I mean, yeah, honestly, you don't get watches like this often, and when you do, it is very, very exciting, for me anyway, because I, I just love the romanticism of watches like this you know we don't know the true story we don't know the full story we never will but we can only imagine and i think that's really cool um especially with a watch this good looking so go check it out on the website buy it before i get more excited about it and just keep it so there you go i got so excited i didn't actually speak about a few details so inside this is an automatic eta 2472 it's from september 1971 and here it is on wrist Wow, what a good looking watch. Okay, don't get distracted again. 36.5 mil by 40.5 mil, that cushion case looks brilliant. 10.5 mil thick and 18 mil looks, endless options, and just a gorgeous watch. So go check it out today. Closing in on the end, nearly there. Let's have a look at this Seiko chronograph, which is solar powered, it's pretty cool. Next up, a Seiko Machina Sportiva. That's totally what it's called, right? Uh, Danny's in the background shaking his head, which means I've got it perfectly right. So thank you, Danny. Um, <laughs> but here it is, a really cool Seiko chronograph, solar powered. Um, I, I just think it's really cool that we've got solar powered watches. We've had them for years now, what, like 15, 16 years with the EcoDrive, maybe even longer, I don't know. But, you know, there's, there's something really cool about that. For example, my dad has a Citizen EcoDrive that he bought, I wanna say 14, 15 years ago now, maybe 13 and he's never had to have a battery or cell change on it. So it's still working to this day with no maintenance whatsoever, which I think is just insane. But anyway, this is the SSC 769P1 and inside is the Seiko Quartz Solar V176 from April 2021. And it's just a really good looking chronograph um, for not a lot of money at all. I believe we're asking under 200 pounds with box papers. Um, you know, where else are you gonna find a watch like th that's this good for that kind of price that looks this good as well. I mean, that dial has got some really interesting textures going on, sort of like a cross hatch. Reminds me of like video games from a few years ago. I don't know why, it just does. But let's put it on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go on wrist. It is uh, 41.5 mil by 49 mil lug to look really good dimensions, 12.5 mil thick and 20 mil lug width. Endless options on straps if you're not a fan of the Seiko bracelet. You know what, it looks good on pretty much everything. So go check it out on the website. And then let's look at all the swatches together just to save some time. Um, let's take a look at all three. So some swatch fun. Here we have a unworn swatch and hack it collaboration. Uh, London limited edition and the reference is SUTZ405-S. And the reason these are called System 51s, and it's the same for all of them, is they have that really awesome movement inside, which is called the System 51, or the Caliber 51. Composed of 51 components all together, mostly made out of plastic, and not a single human hand touches the movement. All made by machine and hermetically sealed, meaning you can't get in there to repair it, which is a shame, um, because longevity-wise, if it just stops working, you're kind of stuffed. There isn't much of an option there which is definitely a shame. But anyway, this one's unworn, does come with its full box and papers, and it's a really, really good looking watch, especially if you're into your tailoring or if you're into Hackett's and what they do, and also you like Swatch. I mean, it's a perfect combination. And then we have two Hadinki editions. We have the Hadinki Vintage 84, as it's known, uh, which is the SUTZ402, and the Generation 18, uh, 1986, which is the S. UTZ406, again, both really good looking watches made in collaboration with Hadinki, come with their box and papers. They are worn, but very sp sort of sparsely worn, so don't worry, it's not like they're proper bad. Um, good looking movements, again, same movement, just decorated differently, which I think is also interesting that they do that. 
Um, and they're just they're good looking watches. But let's show one of them on wrist. Let's choose this one because I like this one the most. And uh, talk dimensions because they're all the same. And there we go. This is a really good looking watch. So 41 to 41.5, depending on how you measure it, uh, by 50 mil lug to lug, 13 mil thick, and 23 mil lugs. That is the total length of that strap, which tapers down. And you can get replacement straps as well directly from Swatch. So there's plenty of options. It's like a really affordable Richard Mill. That's what I'm going to call it because I don't sell Richard Mill. So there you go, we sell Swatch instead. Go check them out on the website, get yourself a bargain for Christmas, and something that's quite fun. So there you have it guys and girls, that is this week's drop. As always, a nice varied drop, something for everyone, from plastic swatches to a massive Panerai that really does wear amazingly and heavy and sort of beefy. Makes you feel like a real man when you put that on, that's for sure. <laughs> and then everything else in between as well that you could possibly imagine from homages to something truly unique. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I have. And I look forward to seeing you all in the next week's episode, the final episode of this year. That sounds insane to say out loud, but yeah, we're nearly in 2022. I'm still trying to remember what 2019 was, but hey, let's just carry on. So we'll see you all next time. Take care and peace out.